Well, it's not all the time that I get to talk to someone I know very personally and who is a role model to so many of us. And I've known him for over 45 years as one of the leading personalities in black business. And this happened in the early 70s when he founded the African Bank, the only black owned bank at that time. And believe you me, at 93, Ntate Mutsonyani is still active in his community with the Dr. Sam Mutsonyani Foundation. And it's a pleasure, Ntate Mutsonyani, to sit here and talk to you about your work and your foundation's work. Thank you very much. You are much more involved with several communities at this time with, uh, with your foundation. Tell me more about it. Around about 2002, I had just returned from Saudi Arabia to retire from active public work. But then I realized that there was a need to focus on local development, agriculture. As an agriculturist by training, I could see a lot of gaps that needed to be filled. And one Sunday, I remember that I decided not to go to church, but rather visit the community in the Ten Morgan area of Winterfeld to ask why aren't we utilizing the land optimally in this area? Why are we so quiet about the fact that we are not developing in this area agriculturally? And I met one man, Mr. Tsukudu, in the Ten Morgan area and stopped my car there and had a little conversation with him. And I asked him this question, aren't you interested in developing Winterfeld into a more productive area agriculturally because originally it was meant for that purpose. Said, so, no, we, we do want to develop agriculturally, but we just don't have ideas. Then I said, can you bring me some of your friends who are farmers here the next Sunday to come and and hold a meeting at my place. And this happened. Uh, there were seven people at my place the following Sunday, which discussed about the development of Winterfeld agriculturally. And uh, whilst we were in the meeting, I asked some of my helpers here in the farm to go and pick up some nice oranges from my own plot, which they did. And when they found that the oranges were as good as any that they have ever tasted, they said, no, this is where we start. And we started the Winterfeld Citrus Project. That was in 2002. By then, we wanted to know just how we were going to help people to get citrus on their plots in Winterfeld. Individuals. Now, the first step was taken by forming the Winterfeld United Farmers Association. You start the whole uh, citrus project in the early 2000s. Yes. Here in Winterfeld. Yes. But then you quickly expand to other villages. Tell me more about this expansion. Well, the Winterfeld Farmers Association sparked some interest in the areas adjoining Winterfeld. Farmers head of the Winterfeld Citrus Project, United Citrus Project, and they came and asked questions. And this is how eventually we expanded to other areas. I want to probe your time as a business leader. How did you get involved in business leadership as well as bringing people together in the formation of the chamber? Early 1960s, when I returned from overseas, I would have either formed my own small business or joined the government to work as an officer, agricultural officer of the government. But I found it more interesting to start my own little business in agriculture in 1964, when I established a nursery at Morocco in in Houting. In Soweto, to be precise. In Soweto, yeah. where I lived. I should indicate that before I went to America in the 50s, we had formed a company called Bumper Syndicate. That company participated in the establishment of Soweto when 
the city council of Johannesburg called on black business people that had lorries to bring the lorries together in order to be involved in conveying the, all the materials that were required for building Soweto. So we had that short business experience. But unfortunately, when Soweto was built, that company, the Orlando Cottage Association, also folded. But then when I came back from the States, I formed my nursery business and joined the Johannesburg African Chamber of Commerce, of which Richard Maponya was chairman. That Johannesburg African Chamber of Commerce was formed in 1955. Now, as a member and an agriculturist, when Maponya and his group decided that we should expand that group and form a national body. I was invited to the inaugural conference of NAFCOC in 1964 as a speaker mm. on the agricultural side because I had already been operating a nursery in Soweto. Mm. The business people got inspired by my speech and said, well, after hearing what you have to say about agriculture, we have no option but to cooperate you into the executive, the initial executive of NACOC. Very interesting story. And uh, we will pick up the conversation in a short while.